Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about quilting, crafting, creativity, with a dash of garden, chatting about current interests and life in my northern town. You can find show notes at mycreativecorner3.com. You can also find all of my social media, how to purchase a virtual cup of coffee, and all events on the website. Please feel free to stop by and leave a comment. I really appreciate everyone who listens. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. It feels like New Year. September is always the New Year to me. Today is September 1st, 2022. Well, most of the kids in the area have gone back to school. And I feel like this is always a time where I start looking at New Year's goals, resolutions, way more now than in January, which tends to be a more reflective thing about the last year and a few things about where I'm going where now I want to reset. You know, summer has been a long drawn out thing for me this year. You know, I got COVID in May, COVID in July, and it's just not been a year of being able to do all of the summer things I normally do. However, I have been doing things at home. I've been working right along, and I have to say I'm ready for a change. I'm ready for the cooler days. The leaves are just starting to turn golden and orange and a few reds. I got up this morning. It was 42 degrees out. Now it's already about 60 and it's going to be 80. Of course, the first couple weeks of school is always hot around here. And I am thinking about redoing some of my routines, but we'll talk about some of those things a little later. So the garden, I always like to open with the garden it is at the last summer flowers still they're going strong because we've had gentle rains a little bit of wind but it hasn't broken any of the tall flowers off my tallest sunflower is about well five feet which is amazing to me because they seem to survive when I thought all hope was lost when I threw those seeds in the ground I started with about 12 seeds. I put nine outside and I did three of them inside in a pot. The three that I seedlings I transplant died immediately. The squirrels got six of the seeds I had put into the ground, but three survived. I think they didn't get really tall because I think I planted them a little bit too deep and um, we had an exceptionally cool beginning of the summer and I have to tell you we can't really grow much until June 1st so June 1st to September 1st it looks pretty good I looked up the name of the tall false sunflowers and they are a type of rudbeckia with a very tall pom-pom flower unfortunately they're taller in most places than the sunflower so I'm thinking I may nip a couple of those off with my garden scissors so I can see the tallest of the sunflowers. It has a nice head getting ready to form in the seeds and the bloom that's about the size of my hand. So it might live up to the seed packet name of mammoth sunflower. <laughs> when um, I podcast last, I had a surprise visit by my daughter-in-law and she dropped off fresh blueberries, which is famous for the part of the state she lives, is very much a fruit um, and vegetable agriculture area. So blueberries are top notch. I'm not a huge fan, but my husband is and I bagged a few of them up for my best friends because there were so many. And she also brought a fresh bundle of lavender from a lavender farm she had visited. It was just beautiful. Now they're dry 
And I tried to do a weaving before they totally dried out and make a lavender wand. And just, I couldn't do it right now. And that's okay. I think I'm going to do instead with the left over buds is make sachets. They smell wonderful in my craft room. And then I made a wee yogurt sized jar of lavender oil. I filled it with an oil I had on hand, which was a safflower oil. And I filled it with as many buds as I could. Um, I layered them in first and then put the oil on top. And I have a silicone lid that fits those jars very, very tightly. The directions say to put it near a window where it's nice and warm. So I did. And after a couple of weeks, I strained off the lavender. And now it's a lovely smelling lavender oil. It captured the essence of those lavender pods at their peak. So what I'm grateful for is I can use that as yeah, maybe in my diffuser or maybe I can put it in um, just a couple of places around the house for some fresh lavender smell. And I'm going to make some sachets out of some scrap fabric that I have left over. So the lavender was a wonderful, wonderful surprise. What have I been doing in the quilting world? Well, not a whole lot of sewing. <laughs> sewing is coming hard for me this month. And I don't think that it's I've lost my sewing urge and my creative urge. It's that I don't feel comfortable running a rotary blade. Um, I could use my Cricut to cut things out, and I could if I wanted to, but I'm, I've got another Cricut project we'll talk about in the Our Creative Soul segment. And I just have found it difficult. Um, there's a lot of brain power, um, higher functioning that you have to use when you're quilting. And yeah, there's not been a good month for that post-COVID. And yeah, I'm going to talk to my doctor about it. I'm not sure there's much that you can do except time. And I'm doing some brain training exercises. But quilting has been hard. So I've put the piecing part using a machine and um, the rotary blade away. And I've put a pause on the granny squares. And maybe I'll dig them out by the end of the month because it is scrappy September. Yeah, Lori Holt came out with Scrappiness is Happiness, and it seems to be taking the quilting world um, by storm. And it's a scrap book, and it looks lovely. It's on my dream list, but I'm not purchasing right now. Meh, I might later. It's just I'm not excited about piecing right now. But I have been long arming at a very slow snail's pace. I was able to put Angel's jewel box quilt on the frame and she has the cutest line. And um, I'll put a link in the description below to the fabric line because it's in her store, Halo Inspiration. So I custom quilted this jewel box quilt. And if you're interested in making one, go to her YouTube. Again, I'll put a link to the first video and you can see how to make it step by step. But the interesting thing about it is I had to think really hard and custom quilting takes me a long time anyway because you have to be consistent in the pattern throughout the quilt. And I did make a couple mistakes and I had to take it out. Um, I stitched a couple leaves backwards in a couple different um, things that just didn't go the way I liked. So there are a couple of little surprises in the quilt though, because there were a couple of mistakes that I thought, yeah, they, they're an interesting thought there. <laughs> but I did the very best I could, I believe. Um, when I look at it in the hole at the end, when I took it off the frame, I was pretty pleased. I used a white thread that blended into the background, and I did a feather in the piano key border all the way around. The next border was a white strip, so I did a consistent size swirl all the way around in that. Then in the middle, what I did was in the white background areas, which makes a diagonal setting with was tiny, tiny swirls. And then in a large area, 
where there are half square triangles that make a square on point if you're familiar with the jewel box i did a large and small little loop all the way around the square kind of like l's and e's that are cursive and then in some other squares that make a path and they come together for a small square i did leaves and then a asterisk I know it sounds chaotic, but throughout the whole quilt, I really thought it turned out great. That quilt has, uh, it's got a little chicken and it's in pinks and reds and, you know, it's just really cute. So I, I didn't want to overwhelm the fabric with a ton of quilting. I did do a ton of quilting, but I didn't want to overwhelm it. So I tried to do tight quilting in the background and the borders and a little bit looser quilting motifs in the cute fabric print and I think it gives it some dimension and I think it gives it some factor where you can keep moving your eye around the quilt and see some new things now quilting pictures aren't they hard to capture I mean, how can you capture a three-dimensional, cuddly, tactile quilt in a 2D photo? I've done my best to capture it in a couple of photos, and I've done a couple videos um, on TikTok, which I'll put in the description where you can see I walk across the quilt for one row, and you can see the patterns that I just described. Um, but I find quilting photos are really not always easy to capture. When you want to highlight the quilting, the picture feels dark. But when you want to highlight the fabric, it washes out your quilting because of overexposure or you have to put a really bright light on it. So anyone have tips and tricks on quilting photos? Um, they are really a challenge. They really can be a challenge. So long arming is what I am going to be focusing on this fall. I have several quilts of my own. I talked about that on last podcast, but last count, I had seven pieces of my own that need to be quilted. Um, most of them are wall hanging size or twin size. And I also have some larger quilts that are customer quilts. I think two queens, a twin, a throw, and um, another size. So, I, you know, about five of them are customer quilts. One, two, maybe six. Oh, I don't know. Five or six customer quilts. So it's, it's the pace I'm going, my normal is to do three to four quilts a month. And um, the custom quilt I just did took me an entire month. That's usually normally 10 days. So you can see I'm going slow. I need to think about it a lot. The processing um, center of the brain just needs to kick in. Um, I'm waiting for that to happen. <laughs> it's, it's coming along, but it's frustrating when people are waiting on it and you just can't do it. So like I said before, I'm going to do a good job. Everybody is patient. And at this point in time, I'm not taking on any customer quilts. I've got three people plus myself that I'm quilting for, and that is really about all I can do at the moment. So machine piecing, the granny square, that's going to go on the back burner. Um, and I'm really focusing on handwork because I can do handwork. I have a plan to start doing some English paper piecing this fall and winter. I haven't picked up the prepped hexagons from my Liberty of London fabric. And I will have to say, I did purchase some more pre-cut charm packs for English paper piecing. And I'll tell you all about my haul. There, I had to go poking around my craft room, which is a little bit disorganized. So I found my English paper piecing and I purchased a Liberty fabric, which is from Riley Blake. So this is a little bit larger cotton print, not the Liberty of London um, Tana Lawn. 
I bought that's a charm pack with about 40 or 50 40 squares in it 42 and I bought another 42 Liberty um, flower show midsummer Riley Blake and I bought Liberty the artist home collection painted sunset and I bought artist home collection sculpture these four I bought from green fairy quilts website and she was having a big sale earlier this summer they go beautifully with the um I can't remember how many pieces I bought from the Etsy shop that were tan lawn cut in three inch squares perfect for my one inch hexes which hexagons if you remember it's one inch per side and they go lovely with it and I thought oh I just can't wait to make this into just a random color wash I think is what I'm going to do just like the inspiration video which is Kate of the last homely house did this for her granddaughter so when I went to Angel's website which is haloinspiration.com okay maybe it's not it's halo inspired I believe but the store is halo inspirations and you can find that easily again link in the description I thought wouldn't it be fun if I put some of these Lori Holt fabrics with these Liberty and I think they would blend well I'm looking at them again you know in person I do think they would they're just they're Riley Blake designs all you know company also they have a good hand Lori Holt has a great palette and I got from Angel store a charm pack called stitch a charm pack called prairie and a charm pack called B plaids now I've also seen a couple of other Lori Holt projects um, on fat quarter shop and on angels site their seed packets and I thought well I could also save some of these charm packs for the pattern which make like prairie flowers to go with the theme of this line um, but I'm not sure that I'll use these fabrics for that I think the charm packs are great they're easy to cut up and use in the one inch squares without using a rotary cutter I can use scissors to do that and freehand cut it I won't cut my finger as easily <laughs> so that's my winter project is to just begin this and I'm not sure if I'll start it this fall but I might just take a few stitches this fall so that is my English paper piecing idea and the haul that I made now with that I bought a panel from Angel Shop called the it's the Prairie Line um, it's a panel of printed squares and some are hexagons with quilt motifs it says home sweet home it's I bought it because it reminded me of little house in the prairie it has some of those wagons on it um they do you remember that show our Laura Ingalls Wilder's books so this reminded me of my childhood and the 1970s the colors are not true 1970s but they have that vibe maybe this panel could serve as the back for that English paper piecing product I'm not sure project I don't know I'm gonna take it out of the bag I've never even taken this out of the bag I know I have an accent my husband's been teasing about my Michigan accent I say bag like bag bag there was a big um, thing on the internet about that so I'm trying very hard to enunciate bag bag oh my gosh why is that so hard okay so this is with the fabric 44 and I think it is approximately it looks like it's roughly two feet wide for the repeat um, for the pan it's considered a panel oh is it ever cute it's got some really cute quilt blocks the her the other thing you could do if with a one inch hexagon is you could cut apart this and use it for English paper piecing I gotta get a hexagon and check 
Okay, my one inch hexagons. I know you hear me rattling around my EPP shoe box here. Would it work? Yes. So something else I could do, but I really like the idea of keeping these little, because uh, the little Hello House on the Prairie wagons and the rows may not fit, but I may take part of this repeat, cut it down and use it for English paper piecing because they are about three inches and would be fantastic one says home sweet home that won't fit on my block but there's some super cute ones that maybe i could trim that down hmm, something to think about i still think i'm going to use it for the back of this project or part of the back and if you always have leftovers you know you can trim it down but i thought wouldn't that be cute would also make a very cute table runner if you wanted to do something like that. I am late to the Lori Holt party um, because Farm Girl Vintage, I do like it. And I it's, I'm not into the country vibe like that, but it's got enough of a fresh modern feel, but it's so much applique. That is not my thing. I have tried to like it and I have decided I don't. And I, so why do something you don't like? However, um, she has some great ideas out there. So one of the things that I discovered was I've, I've been able to watch YouTube more than I can listen to a lot of podcasts. So I have been watching um, Fat Quarter Shop's Friday morning videos on the replay over several lunch hours. Or I've been watching her floss tube. But what got me going is Lori Holt. I've also watched several of her YouTube videos. She has something called design boards. And I have been using them. I finished one. And I've cut out many of several sizes. They really do work well with the flannel. You can put your quilt pieces together. And it will hold your quilt block from the cutting table to the sewing machine. I've cut out a, I think it is a six inch board for cross stitch because I need to cut out some thread holders, but it's a great place to put loose threads and a needle minder and it's cute. So you cut a piece of foam core and they come in sheets that are 20 by 30, I believe. I bought them online and the only place I could buy them singly at the time was Hobby Lobby. I didn't want to buy a pack of 50 of them from Amazon. So I bought it online because our Hobby Lobby was destroyed in the tornado. They have taken the building down completely and it's going to take a while to rebuild it. That's the only craft store I have that is within 50 miles of my house. So I go there for small things that I don't want to pay shipping on, like these boards or some of the frames and things for home decor. And I miss that store because I had to order three large foam core boards and they wound up sitting on my front porch for 4th of July weekend. Now the good news is I still live in a neighborhood where porch pirates did not take my foam core boards. <laughs> Even though we have had a few weird things happen in our neighborhood. So let me tell you the sidebar story before I get back to the boards. Within the last week, it was the second or third time, 1030 at night. I'm in a sound sleep because we go to bed early here and get up early for our jobs. All of a sudden, my husband and I hear this pounding on the front door. I mean, just pounding. It rattled the windows pounding. And I take a long time to, to wake up. He shot out of bed. And when he did, I woke up because I was dreaming that someone was um, ramming our house with a tank or something. That's <laughs> what it felt like. Anyway, I opened my eyes and I realized our house has multiple flashing 
emergency vehicles like police cars or what. The first thing we thought of was the house was on fire and our alarm system failed. So he flew out of bed, went downstairs. There was nothing like that. What, what, I don't know who it was pounding on our door, but by the time he got to the front door to, which we don't use often. So you have to disarm the security system. You have to make sure that everything is all set. And he walks out there. He didn't turn lights on or anything to see what is going on. Mental note. I think we need a ring doorbell on that door too. Um, and the police were arresting somebody. So this is like big deal up for my small sleepy little town. No idea. He goes, you know what? We're not getting in the middle of that. We're in our pajamas anyway. So we would go back to bed, go back to sleep um, and waited because I thought if it was really, really important, they would come back to let us know if there was something that we need to know. Like, was a guy trying to break into our house? Was it was a male? Um, was he messing with our cars? Well, nothing seemed disturbed. I think um, there are two houses the same color as mine in the neighborhood and possibly um, that house has a bad reputation. Um, he, this person was going to the wrong house. This is the second or third time that this has happened, like 10 o'clock at night. So super weird. I digress. Not, that was it. You know, nothing else happened with that story. The police have never come back to the house. And I don't know if it was the police pounding on my door or the man himself. So anyway, quilting boards, you can get a full tutorial on how to make them. If you have the time and a lot of hot glue or there you could use another glue, but I'm using a hot glue gun and I'm using Gorilla Glue. And then I bought a non Gorilla Glue. So I thought the Gorilla Glue is nice for the binding. So you actually take your flannel, cut it to size, glue it around the edges as tight and flat as you can. And then you take a jelly roll strip which I had a few left over and you press it just like you would a quilt binding. You'd press it in half and then you press the open it back up and you press the outside edges toward the middle. So you have a double fold and then you glue your center pressed seam along the very edge of the foam core, fold it down and glue your edge of your binding like you would a quilt and then you have to miter the corners don't forget so don't short yourself as you go around the corners miter your corner glue it down and presto there you go um, joining the ends is much easier because all I have to do is overlap and glue so my binding on my uh, quilt boards are of the one I did is as bad as my binding in real life. So anyway, <laughs> quilt boards, you can make them as cute as you want. You really don't have to do a binding, quote unquote, but they make them super cute. You could use nothing or you could, if you have leftover cord or trim to cover up that raw edge, you could do whatever you wanted. Um but I chose to make mine look like Lori Holtz in the tutorial because I thought that is what made the whole thing so cute. But it's also very useful. So you can buy them pre-made on Fat Quarter Shop. Um, I think they're $18 a board. That's why I chose to buy the foam core because I have everything else to make it. She Lori uses batting on hers for design the design board, I used um, flannel because I had leftover white flannel and it seems to work really well. Um, some of the small boards I may try using batting, but I thought it would get dirty and pick up all the extra strings and it might be a little difficult to clean and keep it for long-term use because I tend to keep things for a long time and use them. So anyway, design boards, full tutorial is on Lori Holtz, B. Lori be in my bonnet and I'll put a link to her tutorial in the show notes. So that's what I've made so far this month. Um, I've worked on a couple of other projects and wrapped up all of the granny squares. I have not joined them together. You know, the crocheted granny squares that um, I made out of pearl cotton since I purchase that instead of DMC floss. 
online. Yay, me. <laughs> well, you, it was cheap enough, you know, you might as well keep up with the granny square along. Um, I, so I finished the cross stitch granny squares that was in July and made a bookmark. I did show a little video on that on my YouTube channel. If you want to see, um, the granny square crocheted squares, they're really bright jewel colors. I like it. And it's going to make a little like doll blanket or teddy bear blanket f for one of my little bears that I keep on my couch. And I, I'm starting to change the clothes for the season for the bear. I know I'm ridiculous, but that's what I do. Um, and the quilt board and cross stitching. So that's been my August makes. So let's go into more of the craft things, which is the Our Creative Souls segment of the podcast. So since I've gotten into cross stitching, I can sit and do that. Fat Quarter Shop um, asked me to join a cross stitch along with them for You're the Boss. After I did the Granny Square bookmark, I got hooked on cross stitch. It's one of those things I put down in a serious uh, cross stitching in the early 90s. I've told you the story of my Santa table topper on even weave that took me 20 plus years to do. Um, I declared it done in 2016. Those are fun projects if you like that, to have these long-term things that you get out once a year. And I'm watching Floss Tube, including Kimberly's, and a lot of people do that. I am not that kind of person. I like to have the project and work on it this way until it's done. UFOs make me a little nuts because they weigh on my mind. Same with a stash makes me nuts because I feel like I have had all of this wasteful stuff. So cross stitch, I just ordered a specific colors that I needed. And when you join a lot of these stitch alongs with Fat Quarter Shop, they have DMC and sometimes other types of cross stitch thread you can buy the pack that is in the pattern and Lori Holt did design the you are the boss of your own quilt stitch along it's adorable and it's not massively big it says that in the center and you can personalize that to say whatever you want and outside it is stars and so I really thought that it was adorable and I am almost caught up with the stitch along, but let's be honest, I'm a little bit behind because I'm moving at a slow pace. I am not a fast cross stitcher and I am a super slow cross stitcher right now. So that's been the majority of my stitching has been working on the You're the Boss of Your Own Quilt cross stitch. And I have a couple of ideas how I might finish it, but when it gets closer to finishing, we'll talk about it. And what I decided to do and how to finish it. But I thought Kimberly has declared um, this, the scrappy month, September is scrappiness, is happiness for quilting. But for cross stitching, Kimberly has said for Fat Quarter Shop, they're doing um, a sunflower September. And they have a pattern and a mystery and there's all kinds of exciting things if you wanted to do that. But I'm like, I'm still working on You're the Boss. So I do not want to start another stitch along, but they have a free little petite pattern, which is a sunflower. And I thought, perfect, I will do that for Sunflower September on some of the scrap Ada cloth I have from the couple of projects that I've done. And I decided I might also in October, there's a free pattern from last year, which is bats and booze. You remember I did the free quilt along and I have the top done. That's my goal to in October long arm it, but I'd like to cross stitch that pattern. It's really, really cute. That's my thought. So I found online, I'm like, I don't have a hobby store in my town. And I didn't want to go to Walmart to rummage through the threads. This is the thing that bugged me about cross stitch in the 90s. I would go to the local store. Back then it was a Ben Franklin that has since gone out of business. 
and then Walmart came to town, but you're rummaging through trying to find a thread that matches the color almost, right? I, I need color 745 and they had 740 or 748. But sometimes when you got home, you realize it's not even close. So I found a company called Everything Cross Stitch in Ohio, and they have a beautiful website and you can go through and click I want this color, this color, this color in DMC embroidery floss. Yeah, don't, don't do pearl cotton, people. <laughs> it's not the same for a specific type of embroidery. You use it, you can crochet with it, but in, in most embroidery, uh, cross stitch pieces, you want embroidery floss or other types of embroidery. Uh, I mean, embroidery floss um, with different companies and there there's tons of conversion keys out there for like if the pattern is written in DMC colors if you want to get a different company like Anchor or some of the specialty threads they have comparison charts so I like DMC it was 60 cents a skein on everything cross stitch. And because I live in Michigan and the shop is in Ohio, it was uh, less than $3 to send me 10 skeins of thread for the sunflower and for bats and boo. And I know the sunflower is tiny. I'm going to use hardly any of that thread. But I found this treasure trove of cross stitch books in my bookcase. Where did they come from? Well, they're vintage cross-stitch books from the late 90s, early 2000s from my husband's grandmother. I don't know why she loved collecting leisure arts pattern books. And she didn't even cross-stitch that I know of, but she loved the books so much. And she was part of their um, Book of the Month Club that was super popular back then. And there are probably six or eight beautiful books some of them are a little dated for the early 2000s, but in this book called Quick as a Wink is a ton of super, really almost instantaneous for most people, but they're quick stitches. And in that book is at least three sunflower patterns. And I thought, oh, great. If September keeps rolling along, there's a seed packet that looks like a sunflower and there is a sunflower border for a towel and there is another sunflower that's got three sunflowers in a bouquet and I will pick definitely the seed packet and we'll see how my time management goes for September. I'm going to try stitch in hand this month versus using my Q snap frame and see if it goes faster. I've been watching um, videos and floss tubes on how to become a faster stitcher. So, and a better stitcher and a more clean stitcher. And I've learned several things so far and I'm very happy with it. So that is the cross stitch scene, which I've seemed to have fallen back in love in after I said I would never ever do it again. So on my Cricut, I did download a pattern from Etsy shop on cutting your own floss holders and teardrop shaped ones are the most popular. This one had five or six shapes. One is the teardrop, one's a rectangle, one is a flower, one is a heart, one is a coffin shape for Halloween. To be honest, one, some of my favorite one is that coffin shape and the teardrop and the rectangle. The other ones are big and bendy. So I'm cutting them out on a thin chipboard and I have an old book that I was going to throw away with its recipes and a weight loss book in it and it's got purple ink on the pages. So I thought, wouldn't that be adorable? You sandwich them together. You cut out the three layers with that core being your chipboard. And I might even try layering two layers of this thin chipboard to make them super stiff and then use the cutout of the recycled book on the top and bottom. And then you put them on a ring or a carabiner or even a keychain. You know, the old kind that's a 
little steel balls that you hook. Yeah, I I might even have one of those. I have a carabiner or I may just break down the next time I make an Amazon order and order a pack of those rings that you can slide them on. Then you can, per project, put the skeins on. It has two holes that you cut out in the shape, a hole where you loop your thread on, and then you write your thread number in pencil. And then you have another hole at the top big enough to put on one of those rings. What's good about having these teardrops or thread drops, they're called if you were to buy them, is that you write the number on the thread drop and you can lose the number of the floss. I'm just saying you can lose the little DMC label on it. So if you put them on a thread ring or thread drop on a ring, you probably will remember what color it is for future use when you might want to use that again when it's a scrap because you still generate <laughs> scraps with cross stitch the Ada cloth and the thread so the th quilting board is great to catch threads that are long enough that you want to use but they're too short to maybe thread on the thread drop and i like to put them on that board because i may just pick up that thread for a stitch in a few minutes without having to put it back on because I'm lazy and don't want to overdo it. So I have been doing those. I, I want to cut out more so I have all one shape. I think it would look cute because what I have left over from a couple Christmases ago is I made um, shrink plastic shapes. And then I put a hole in the middle and, you know, before you shrink them down. So they're really hard discs and I put them on a thread screw for shawls and wraps. And these would be perfect for that hole in the thread drop. If you put it in the hole that you string on a ring instead of being uh, gathered on a ring all squished together, you could make like a flower. <laughs> right because there it's a screw and you can put all five or six on a screw and it would hold your thread drops together without them being scattered all over on a ring so I'm going to try that and see how it works and I've been very very happy with that so those are the couple things on our creative souls my sister's in the middle of a kitchen renovation of her 100 year old home they are rewiring it so the whole ceiling has come down and they're going to put it back up with um a couple of different ideas she still hasn't quite figured all of that business out but the electrician is coming and doing all kinds of work for her house and then they're going to do all of the um, renovations inside on their own including putting up some shelves and painting the base cabinets and doing some very interesting things so we'll share more of that probably next year as she gets that project finished up she's not working as many hours so she has more time for projects and um, she's put a pause on her knitting machine stuff because she got a new job and was working crazy hours like 60 hours 50 60 hours a week there until this month where they seem to have their staffing situation taken care of so I'm going to end the podcast on my New Year's ideas. September is New Year's. So September is the time where I start thinking about how I want to do my daily rituals. What I've been doing isn't quite working for me. And so I think I need to have more time in the morning to organize myself for the day. And I'm going to try to get a quilt loaded on the weekend. If the quilt is loaded, I could long arm one row in the morning before I go to work um, and if that doesn't take off in the next couple of weeks because my lunch hour um, long arming a row I used to row do a row in the morning before work and a row at lunchtime um, I may have to go to doing a row as soon as I get home from work on the long arm and I need to start working on 
Um, what my doctor and I are going to talk about is an exercise program and how I need to weave that in with my week. But fall is the month, you know, fall. September is the month where I start thinking about these fall rituals that I do every year. A little mini fall cleanup that's kind of like a spring cleanup. I do not do a whole lot in the garden. I'm talking about the house, you know, getting it ready for being buttoned up for the furnace to be run. Um, try to get some decluttering done before the holidays. Change the decor from summer to fall. I've got a lot of pumpkins and orange and all kinds of quilts and pictures and now cross stitch and and you know I don't carve jack-o'-lanterns anymore but I have several jack-o'-lantern um, things that I put up I try to prepare my goals and intentions for the year which I talked about my craft goals I want to work on my exercise and getting stronger goals getting in the gym I would, this is the time of year when the Hugue starts, right? It's the comfy, cozy season where I get candles out and the spicy scents and try to make the house all cuddly and warm because it's already getting cold and the furnace will probably be running before you know it. So I need my quilts that we're going to use that are a little heavier for the winter, get my bed quilts out that have been put away for the summer. And there is another term called langom, L-A-N-G-O-M, and I believe it's Swedish. And there's some books going around, and it's about being content with right, with enough, that what you have is enough, being content with what you have right now is just where you're supposed to be. I'm going to check a book out of the library. That's one of my goals today is go and get a replacement library card and find this book. Also, I usually get my seasonal affective disorder lamp out in September and start sitting under it when I'm doing hand stitching in the evening. I also want to make a trip to the apple farm or the pumpkin patch. Um, There is an apple farm near my son's house. We've been going and they have apple cannons and a petting zoo. And of course, all kinds of apples. We get a few apples and we wind up never using all of them. But I'm going to get a smaller bag of apples this year with cider and pumpkin donuts. I don't drink pumpkin spice coffee, but I did have a pumpkin spice muffin filled with a dollop of cream cheese in the middle at Tim Hortons already this year. And it was fabulous. So these rituals, um, some of them I've already started and I've marked the beginning of my new year. Um, This podcast was started in September. And so I also like to think of it as a new season for the podcast And I had to look it up, but I started this podcast in 2016 on September 7th. So if my math is correct, it's been six years. I don't think I'm going to do anything special for six years. Sometimes I've done some special things to celebrate the um, beginning of a new season of the podcast, just because um, I just... I just can't right now. However, I always feel that the show notes are there for you to look at. And I'm going to put a couple links to some of the free patterns that I talked about from Fat Quarter Shop for cross stitch, um, links to tutorials, links to things that I find very interesting that I've talked about in the show. So feel free to stop by the website, mycreativecorner3.com and leave a message, comment, um, tips, tricks, anything on the show notes. I do enjoy getting the comments and clicking on the links. Just, you know, know, I know that if people are doing that that'll help me to keep up on not being lazy about the show notes because they're really quite a task to do I was going to say something about them being a pain and the never mind anyway show notes can be but I am going to definitely put um, the links 
in the show notes. And feel free to stop by my YouTube channel because many of the things that we talk about, if you want to see them, um, they'll be in videos. Now, things that are labeled my floss tube and will have a little bit of quilting stuff in it is primarily cross stitch. And I'm trying to do about a video a week. And sometimes it's this audio podcast. Sometimes it's the floss tube, which I've just started up. And sometimes it's just what I'm making and what I'm doing. Not very many tutorials. It's just almost like a short podcast. So wrapping it up, what is your September projects. Do you have a feeling like I do that September is really more of a new year? Because that was traditionally when I started school. And it's when I've always felt that this is the change of the big changing of the seasons. And because of the ritual of going to school in the fall for me, this feels more like me getting energized to make some plans, some dreams, some intentions, on what it is I want to do this fall. And I'm still working out on working out in my mind how I want my daily flow to be. And, you know, slowing down and pacing myself is part of recovery and rehabilitation. Um, and I have found a couple of online things for like you know, the COVID group. And there's a couple of quilt groups online that I've tried. Um, they're all lovely people, but you know, I'm finding it hard to attend some of these things because they're right after work and, you know, trying to run home and log in to a meeting and not be intrusive because you're late is hard. So what I'm trying to do is find something that works better on you know, like in the evening or maybe on a weekend. I don't know. Maybe it's just I feel like I can't keep up sometimes with all of the things. So I'm not trying to. I'm just going to do all of the things that I need to do. And I don't feel stressed about the projects, even the long arming, because I have some lovely friends and family who know that I'll do things as I get done and can do them. Oh, just a second. I'm going to cough. Sorry. <laughs> so I want to say thanks for stopping by and listening. Thanks for all of those who have left comments on the website in the show notes. And I would like to buy um, thanks to all of those who have bought me a virtual cup of coffee. I thank Diane. I thank Sue. I thank Barb. I thank Marsha, Jeannie, Gail, and all of those who support me with the Kofi who remain anonymous. Um, Kofi.com is where you can buy the virtual cup of coffee. And of course, there is a link on the website. So thanks, everyone, because... Kofi helps support the cost of running the podcast and um, mostly the web server and all of the programs that you need, um, equipment, things like that. And I appreciate everyone who's bought me a cup of coffee because the other thing I actually use the Kofi money for is when I splurge and go out and buy a real cup of coffee or tea. So thanks, everybody. Have a most wonderful week. Stitch and quilt on, everyone. <laughs>